voices are up. Are we now? Yeah, another, are we now? another Sunday, another Father's Day. No way. The is day, it Father's Day? It is, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, the day after Juneteenth, I, I got to say, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah, how about that? Did uh, I, I know you probably you probably didn't know this, but uh, Juneteenth uh, happens to be my, my mother's birthday, believe it or not. Really? So, yeah. Yeah, so it was my it was my mom's birthday yesterday. That's cool. So happy, happy birthday to your mom. Happy birthday to my mom. How about that. That's really cool, man. And that's a cool. That's a cool. You know, especially now that it's a federal holiday. I think it was just made this week as a federal holiday. It right? was. I actually I was supposed to work yesterday, and I got ended up getting the day off because <clears throat> the army because it came down so because the the order basically got it came down so fast. The army said. Um, and kind of left, they left, they left it up to the individual units. Basically, they said, next year, next year you don't have a choice. This year, because of the short notice, if you are not busy or whatever, like, you know, you can give your soldiers the day off. Or if you're like already in the field or already doing something, you know, okay, sucks to suck this year, but next year, no excuses, right? So, but okay. because of my because of the unit I'm in, I got the day off. I got the day off yesterday. So. I like that, man. I like that. You know, uh, I think I think it's imp- I think it's it's a, it's long overdue. Obviously, uh, uh, as many oh, yeah. people would agree. Absolutely. Uh, I think I think it's very cool that now it is recognized as an official holiday. You know, I I know there were some people at work that were at my job trying to take off because of the day, and you know, hey, they were granted it. You know, hey, why Good. not? You know. Good. Good. Fucking fuck yeah! That's yeah. that's how it should be. That's how it should be. It's like it was a great day in history, you know, and, and for for anybody out there that isn't familiar with Juneteenth and the story behind it is basically when the when the Civil War ended and the right side won because the right side fucking won the Civil War. Um, it ended in April of 1865 in June of 1865. It took until June of 1865 before slavery was officially made illegal, basically, like they finally said, like. Slavery is is not okay to have in this country, and that proclamation came out on June nineteenth. So that is the, the the baseline of the story behind Juneteenth. And Juneteenth has been traditionally celebrated um, primarily in the African American communities, but it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger every year, um, and it's been celebrated since then. And and like John was saying, um, it's 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 a historical thing, and it's long overdue. And we are we here at DD two fourteen are very very happy to uh, to celebrate it and to bring in and usher in a new era where Juneteenth is celebrated as a officially recognized federal holiday. So happy happy Juneteenth to everybody out there. I love and slavery. Slavery is not okay. Yes, sir. And I also want to add in how, like the cool little like how they put June nineteenth into one word Juneteenth. Like that's. You know, right. like it, it, it doesn't sound it doesn't sound dumb. Like it, it, it sounds like it, it goes together. It sounds cool. It does. It, it, it sounds like a fucking party, which it fucking should be. Like it sounds like it's Juneteenth. It's a fucking party, man. Yeah. Like let's let, let's uh, celebrate the fact that it's no longer okay to keep fucking human beings in fucking shackles, you know, and subjugate them uh, to to our own fucking wills anymore, right? Like let's celebrate that shit. Absolutely. Let's celebrate that shit. Absolutely, man. And you know we got I got a really cool a really cool thing that I read about uh, about Juneteenth not about the day but about uh, uh, a really cool African American unit from New York called the Harlem Hellfighters which I'll get into later oh, after so, our like, yeah it's it's yeah, actually yeah. a pretty cool how, how I stumbled it, 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 I was just looking you know deep diving and shit and I found this story and I was just so intrigued that I have to I have to tell it in honor of. Of I'd the look, holiday, I'm that actually looking forward to that. Yeah, it's um, good, man. Yeah, man. But uh, how how you doing this week, man? You doing all right? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. For the most part, um, I don't know. I'm kind of. I'm probably gonna sound like a bitch, man. But I, I don't care. I'm. <laughs> I, I, I just. I've been. I've really been missing missing my girlfriend this week. A lot, and I get. I get to see her. I get to see her. Um, uh, next it's, it's, I mean, today is Sunday, so it's technically next week, but it's about a week. I get to see her in about a week yeah. and a half. And so, and I, I've just been being a little bitch and my, 
my my daughters went back to West Virginia. They went to West Virginia with their grandparents for the summer. So they left. So like I, I have like this this empty fucking house right now, and it's really quiet. And I've been trying to keep myself. I, I've been trying to keep myself busy, and I have been keeping myself busy. But at the same time, like it's it's a little too quiet. Yeah, you know what I mean. Sometimes too quiet. You know, it's too quiet when you're and, when you're alone. You're alone by yourself, and when you're alone by yourself, you're alone with your thoughts. And there you go. You know, and I and I'm my my girlfriend has been taking very very good care of me, and she she does amazing things and i <laughs> unfortunately i'm not always the best jay you know and so i i act like a fucking little bitch sometimes and i i i i wish i was with her in person because i just she she makes a, she makes the whole world better that is she probably, makes the whole world better so i just yeah that's probably the most beautiful thing i've heard come out of your mouth man you probably you're probably the most, not wrong. the most po- the most positive thing too. Oh my god, guys, <laughs> this is this is real. This is happening. This is yeah. happening, and you know, and it's cool too because you know, me and my wife were talking about our, our Kansas City trip, and yeah, you know, she she's re- she 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 would say she wants to have she wants to meet her in video in, in Skype or something soon, so that you know, it's not like a, a uh, like we're all strangers. Yeah. Yeah, we 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 can definitely do that. Yeah, we can definitely set up like a, a Skype call, and we can all we can all talk for a little while. That's fine. That's too easy. Yeah, and also, yeah, she, and also I'm thinking about bringing a, a baseball too for us to sign two two baseballs, one for one for me me and one for you, and we'll all just sign it. We'll keep it. Nice little memorabilia. Like, that's a good idea. Hey, you got like, you, you got you got to sign the baseball, man. Dude, you're gonna dig. You're gonna dig. You're gonna dig. I uh, I, I I still call it Royal Stadium. I, I I always call it Royal Stadium. It's it's called Kaufman, Kaufman Stadium now. It's 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 Royal when Stadium. I was, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, it was Royal Stadium. And yeah, like I I can't wait for you to see it. I can't wait for you to experience like that magic at the ballpark, man. Um, I dude, I'm just like I'm I I want a ballpark frank. I haven't had a ballpark oh, frank dude. in fucking oh, dude. in fucking years. <laughs> me and me and me and me and my lady went to a Royals game. Um. Uh, was it last month? I was out there like last month, I think, or whatever. And we went to a Royals game, and I got like the big one. Obviously, that you know they're not cheap. Nothing's cheap at a ballpark. Yeah. But it was. But but you but you have to you have to have that part of the experience, right? You, of course. You have to at least you have to at least drink one beer. You have to at least eat one hot dog, right? Like that's part of like the 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 ballpark and experience. You, and you right? got to get it from a guy that's screaming hot dog here. Get your hot dogs. They, I don't think they do. They don't at Kauffman Stadium. They don't do the hot dogs in the stands anymore. They they still do beer and they do cotton candy and they. I want to say they do popcorn. Oh, cotton candy. Don't co- they? Yeah, they don't. You have to go to the concession stand you, for you hot said, dogs. You said yeah. cotton candy and popcorn. You said you said my kids' favorite things: cotton candy and popcorn. <laughs> cotton candy. Get your cotton candy here. Yeah? <laughs> it's gonna be the. You know? It's gonna be. It's gonna be world record paying thirty five dollars for a bag of popcorn. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll, it'll be it'll be, but it'll be worth every it'll be it'll, worth it'll be so fucking buttery it'll be so good. Um, what, hey Deshaun, thank you. Happy Father's Day to you, homie. Happy Father's Day happy to you. Happy Father's Day, Deshaun. And, and John and John, happy Father's Day to you, brother. Oh, thank like, you, man. Happy Father's Day to you. Oh, baby. Yeah, Nick, I was good. I was I was, I was really I was really. We should totally have a Skype double date when Jay is here. I uh. I just want to I just want to send a shout out to all the all the dads out there. Like, good job fucking hitting the target, man. You you shot expert on the range. <laughs> you shot expert. You, know? you shot expert on the fucking range. So good job. You fucking you ended up with some fucking crotch spawn. You know what I mean? Like, good job with the fucking with the uh, with you know congratulations on the sex. You know, like you you have living proof. You have living proof that you had sex at least as many times as as, as children as you have. So yeah. congratulations on that. You know, good job. Like, happy Father's Day. I hope. Uh, Hope everybody out there is having a good day. And I hope for those who are not home, <laughs> for all the soldiers and servicemen not home, celebrating Father's Day without, you know, yeah. their children or their fathers. Hey, you out there too. You're doing the thing as well, man. You're doing yeah, the thing you, as well. You, you guys keep on keeping on, man. I've I've missed I've missed several Father's Days. Keep, I'm usually keep on keeping on. I love that line. <laughs> Life, uh, yeah, life, 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 life uh, has a, a funny way of keeping me away from my kids on Father's Day. I don't know quite what it is. Like this year, <laughs> they, they, well, they were, they were going. My, my, my in-laws were out here, uh, staying with me and helping out a little bit for the last couple months, and they had, they had to go because they'd been out here for a couple months, and they ended up leaving um, uh, earlier the last week. So, 
Father's Day happened and, you know, like it's it's Father's Day and my house is quiet, but it's also Father's Day and my house is quiet. So am I am I really complaining or am I not complaining? I don't know. I don't know what 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 am I I miss I miss my beautiful beautiful children, but but it's quiet in my house and I'm kind of, I kind of like it sometimes, so. <laughs> hey, sometimes so. quiet is good. Sometimes you need a little peace and quiet. And thank thank you, baby. Dude, I appreciate I'm gonna that. Take, brother. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of debating on uh, taking myself out for a fucking meal later, just sitting by myself and eating a meal by myself. Like, hey, hey sometimes, sometimes that's okay too, man. That's okay yeah. too. You know, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, before we get to game news, I got something I want to talk about. Uh, about let's, let's hear it. Let's hear it real quick. So, go ahead. I I've done every type of research that I can on this, and you know, if you haven't been following baseball. A lot of the pitchers are getting hit with this. The they just got hit with it with a ban. Um, it's for this substance that's been called it's it's spider tag. It's like a goopy, tacky yeah. substance, and it's supposed yep. to help with the grip of the ball. Now, right now, this was is it hasn't been technically made illegal, illegal <laughs> for a long time. A lot of pitchers have been using this for a long time, but they've also been using. Rosen and sunscreen to get to get a good better grip on the ball, but the problem is that with the spider tack, it's increasing their spin rate and velocity and turning their baseballs into fucking bullets. Yeah, it's, well. and and the big problem that that I've been understanding is that the MLB they have the lowest the lowest um, hit records in baseball in like. Years in history, because in history yeah, it, it, it's in history. It's in history. It's it's there are historical historical lows on batting averages, yeah. and this in, and uh, this is it. We're here. We're talking. We're talking going all the way back to what they what they call the dead ball era. So we're talking like back when like Ty Cobb, Ty Cobb and and uh, Horace Ra- uh, Honus Wagner and when they were still uh, doing the spitballs. When they when I mean literally it was called the dead ball era because like it was that's why Babe Ruth got so huge being a big home run hitter because home runs were not common back then. It was, that's, it was literally called the dead ball era. So I want you to finish John, because I already have an opinion on this. So I want, you know, being a long time baseball fan, I want you, you say your thing. Yeah. Because I'm just going to start ranting. So you can now, now it's no secret, you know, pitchers use pine tar, the sunscreen and Rosen, but the spider tack seems to, you know, shoot their, their RPMs, increasingly high like super high and you know one pitcher in particular uh garrett cole um mm-hmm. he is he's pretty much and i can't believe he's a fucking yankee and you know they the guys I, I i hate to say it but the guy it was an idiot answering this when they asked him oh like uh do you use spider tech he was like i don't know how to answer it like we know you fucking use it just say you use it you know you use it to help with your pitching I- you know why are you being a bitch? Yeah, there, why are you being a little bitch? Now there are other pitchers, and now okay, now at first I took it as okay, this guy's, you know, his th- these guys' numbers are going up a lot, so they're they're cheating. You know that that was my first initial thought. They're cheating, but then a one pitcher, Glasno from from the Rays, got injured because he went cold turkey on the spider tack and decided to pitch without it. And he did really good, except he fucked up his something. He fucked up his forearm because he was using all his all his muscle force to grip the ball, right? In order in order to throw it. Now, with all of this, um, they the not you, you will get a ten day suspension if you are caught with it. Yeah, you get a ten day. Uh, yeah, a ten. Um, starting pitchers will have more than one mandatory check per game, and each relief pitcher must be checked either at the conclusion of the inning in which he entered the game or when he is removed. A player who possesses or applies foreign substances and is using it to, like, you know, slip it to the pitcher, they'll also get they'll they'll also get suspended too. So they're you know they, this shit this shit is like this is this is getting they, they're not happy with it now. My now my stance on it, you know, and and I have I have a couple of stances on it. Well, first, I'm okay with it as long as you're not using it to. Oh, man, well, what am I trying to say, man? It's it's because it's a it's a very it's a very. There's one side that says it's cheating, and then there's another side that says it's tactical. 
but if it's tactical, why aren't you just using the sunscreen and Rosen? Because now they can't even use sunscreen anymore. They're not even allowed to wear sunscreen in the indoor in the indoor park or during a, a dust game. No sunscreen. That's it. No. Well, my question is, if you're if you're gonna cheat, why the fuck aren't you getting away with it? You should, you know, like, why aren't you getting away with it already? The whole, the whole, whatever this substance is that is tech was like technically legal. Like you're a fucking major league baseball pitcher. Like figure it the fuck out, dude. Like you already, you made it to the big show. Like why do you need a substance to assist you? And if you're going to cheat, you might as well just fucking cheat, but get away with it. Don't be a pussy. It's, it's like cork in the bat. It's like cork in the bat. Oh, as long man. as the fucking, as long as the bat doesn't fucking break, nobody knows, right? So fucking do what you got to do. I got you. Like in the in the infantry, man, we we always say like, if you ain't cheat, you know, if you if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. You know what I mean? This like, is true. This is true. But but we will fucking we will smash your face and hammer your ass if you get caught. You get in more trouble for getting caught than you get in trouble for fucking cheating in the fucking army. You get in more trouble for getting caught. Yeah. So we teach you to fucking not get caught. So let's let's talk about some you know famous spitball pitchers. Fucking Gaylord Perry. Yeah. The dude like literally like revolved his career on around the spitball. On the spitball. He had a fucking character in a what was that uh, funny movie? Uh, Major League with Charlie Sheen. Yep. yep. There was a char- There's a character in that fucking movie. It was loosely based on Gaylord Perry. You know the the the, the old the, the old timer pitcher that just had to fucking load the ball every Absolutely, time. Absolutely. Yeah. You know like. That that dude was based on Gaylord Perry, basically. He's loosely based on Gaylord Perry. That's great. I mean, there are pitchers that like they're known for it. Okay, if if you're a young twenty something, you know, twenty something, early thirties, uh, major league baseball pitcher, and you need this fucking sticky tack, whatever the fuck it is, like, did you even make it? Like, did you even yeah. make it? Yep. And, like, and I and I, I, I agree. I. I I question that. Yeah, and the more and the more I think about it, the more the more I'm like, oh my god, yeah. Why are you using like okay, I, like I said again, I get it. You want to use pine tar, you want to slide it on your hat. Okay, I get it. You want to use the sun the sunscreen with the rose, and I get it. But right. then I also feel bad for Glasner who got injured for this. But then also I'm thinking you're depending on on this substance too much, right? And then. Uh, um, oh fuck! I just had a really good thought. Happy Father's Day, Neil Fizzy. Um, yeah, what's up, Neil? That's oh. my that's my boy right there. Oh shit! That's my boy. Yes, that's, that's that motherfucker right there is from T Town, Tucson, Arizona. Oh, right, shit. that's Neil Fizzy right there. That's my boy. Fizzy, N- motherfucker, N- Fizzy dude. Oh man! And now good to see you. Yeah, and now my biggest gripe about this is towards the MLB. If they think it was oh. such an issue, why one? Why did they take so long to address it? Two, why are they doing it in the middle of a season instead of letting the pitchers adjust? You know, I think that the pitcher, I, I know, I, I, I feel like that the pitcher should at least been given enough time to adjust themselves off of the, off of the, 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 the spider tag because tomorrow is when the, it's, it's when it's enforced. I, and right. I, and this, right. this, this is, this is all just happening within the last week. So now, I, I feel like we're gonna see a lot more injuries. We're gonna see some true pitchers now, and it's funny because I, I I'm almost certain that that Garrett Cole is gonna be starting August 9th. So that's gonna be interesting to see. Really? Yeah. You get oh, so you get to see him. You're gonna probably get to see him live in Kansas City. Yeah. So we get I get to get to see him bust or 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 do his thing. So it's it's gonna be interesting. Um, I. The funniest Good. thing is that this whole thing started because Garrett Cole and another pitcher, Trevor Bauer, don't like each other. And Trevor Bauer pretty much called them on. That's how this whole thing started. That's how the whole thing started. Basically, basically haters hating, Cotton, right? Cotton, haters they, were, hate. they, they, were on, they were on the same rotation in a, in, a, in a college team like 10 years ago. And they just had different work ethics and they hate each other because of it. And Trevor Bauer pretty much was just like, yeah, yeah, he's fucking cheating. He's using spider tack and yeah, that's that. <laughs> So, so, so they're basically like alumni to the same college. And yeah, like, exactly, and 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 they're fucking pieces of shit towards each other. Awesome. That's yeah. That's that's not like see that that just. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. To you, they both kind of sound bitch made to me. Oh, like the, the 
The one dude's kind of bitch made because he needs fucking spider attack to be a good pitcher, and the other dude's a bitch for fucking yeah. calling his army out. And it's so funny like, too because the way that they describe Garrett Cole is is probably the reason why he's in the New York Yankees because he just has that 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 like Yankee that thing. Yeah, you know he's, that, he's a, yeah he's a Yankee. Yeah, yeah, he's a fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I'm I'm okay. I get it. I get it, and I'm okay with it. I, I'm okay with it. All right, so. That's it with baseball. Also, for, um, for baseball, the if you guys are interested, the Home Run Derby is July 12th. And okay. I already have a prediction that Shohei Otani is going to be the first pitcher to win the Home Run Derby. Ooh. Because Ooh, I like that. Remember, he, I, I, I kind of want to put something on that, dude. Yeah. Like, that's a good... Yeah. Damn, dude. Shohei Otani is, the, is right now, he is a two-way hey, player you- for the Angels. Hey, uh, can you put up that? Uh, can you put up that thing that you sent me yesterday, with, or uh, you sent to the admin chat, where it's got uh, Babe Ruth and this dude like side by side? Their first like, is there? Do you have that on your computer, or was oh, that only on your? Phone? I I think that that's just on, yeah, that's definitely just on my phone. I gotta grab that, yeah. but d- let me let me let me let me try to look that up real quick. But John 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 sh- sent me a a thing. I don't know if he sent it to me or just to me or the the, the admin chat alone, but it was um. It's a side by side comparison of Shohei Atani and and Babe Ruth through the first like forty something games of their career, and this dude's stats next to Babe Ruth, granted only through, you know, the first forty games or whatever, but he's blowing Babe Ruth out of the fucking water right now, like as far as like a stat. So interesting, very very interesting stat and statistic, like to to see, and and he's a pitcher. Yeah, so he's a pitcher. He's a pitcher, he's a pitcher and, and an outfielder from Japan. Twenty six yeah. years old. Where did you send that? I'm looking right now. I'm not. I'm not seeing it. And I can't even remember where I where I had it too. Oh, there it is. I got it. Oh, it's you, it's in, it's in the admin chat. The, can you can you see this at all? No. I, if it's in the admin chat, I'm gonna go get it right now. Oh, yeah, Neil Fizzy's sure. right. Fernando Tatis Jr. The kid is a stud. His, bu- you know, that kid, that kid hit hit a a, a rec- He hit a record career homer the other day, I believe, actually. And what what, you know, Fernando T- Tatis like his like his father, outstanding, out out fucking standing. I I, I have I have nothing but I got to go with Shohei. I have I have to go with Shohei. God damn it. My girls want to call me right now. <laughs> I'm I'm telling them they'll have to do it here in a second. Hey man, you get this is live, man. This this is Father's Day. This is the show, man. Yeah, but I think they have. I I think they they hid they hid something for me in the house, and they're probably excited. Oh. To- yeah, it's not, it's, not, it's not just a phone call. I'm gonna have to do something probably. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> no, but yeah, guys. Um, actually, Tatis Jr. is part of the 2021 Home Run Derby as well, as well as uh, Vladimir Guerrero. Who, I mean, they're I mean, they're all Vladimir, huh? Where the fuck is that dude from? I think I, I think Vladimir I think Vladimir Guerrero oh, is. He... Where's he fucking from? Vladimir. I, I, Vlad... I, he's probably Dominican. Who the fuck names their kid fucking Vladimir? Like he, he... outside of fucking Russia. Where's this motherfucker from, dude? I'm already fucking pissed off at him because he's see. fucking. Hey, he's Dominican. Yeah, You're right. Yeah, I'm t- I'm, hey, let me tell you, the Caribbean produces some of the greatest fucking oh. baseball players. Unde- undoubtedly. Uh. But uh, for for Mr. Guerrero, fucking apparently his parents produce fucking terrible fucking names. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So on to the bread and butter. So last last week last weekend was E3, guys. Um, I'm starting to I'm starting to sorry I'm sorry, guys. Last night I, I couldn't sleep for shit, so I'm a little off today. As you can see, my hair is all disheveled. But I'm starting. John was fucking. John was ranting last night. He's been pissed for a whole week straight. John right. has been pissed for a whole week straight, guys. I've been listening to this guy, bitch and moan and cry all week because. E three fucking sucked. Yeah, so sucked. so before I get to the rant, I just want to say there there were plenty of games I'm very happy to see that I was happy to see. Uh, obviously Starfield, which I was just like, let's fucking go. But where the fuck was Rockstar at? Where the fuck were you at? That's one. Non existent. Nothing Non-existent. with nothing with Call of Duty. 
absolutely nothing. nothing. And we haven't even gotten a, we haven't even gotten the data. When the fuck? Excuse my French. When the fuck PlayStation <laughs> is even doing their panel? Because from what I remember, PlayStation and Call of Duty still have a strong partnership. So we have they to do. wait until PlayStation is like, hey, we're going to do this. Now, PlayStation has a game called Horizon Forbidding West coming out very soon. And we got nothing. Nothing. What the Zero. fuck? Zilps. Nada. Fuck you. They, we got a big fuck you from like the whole gaming industry I, last week. I, I'm like, telling the you. The gaming industry like just... Face planted last weekend. Now, in saying that, Xbox showed up. Even with like they did, even with their yeah, even, yeah, even with their non-familiar titles and their more kiddish ti titles, you know, they showed up. One, they at least tried. They yeah, at least tried. They opened up with Starfield, and and let me tell you, Starfield is going to be fucking good. It's going to be a Han Solo Skyrim in space. It's going to be open open universe. You get to go. Apparently, you get to go to planets. You have a robot named Basco that travels around with you. And you have to press a bunch of fucking buttons in order to... And you get to build a spaceship. Who doesn't want to build a spaceship? And space fights. So... Right, right. But there was right. there was two games that got my attention strongly. Well, first, Forza Horizon 5 looks really fucking good. Really good. But um, I'll start off with Redfall. So Redfall is... Uh, is um, It's by Bethesda. If you saw, it was the final trailer that was presented by Bethesda, and it was like, a, you know, it takes place in Boston. It, it, it's it. Oh, it takes place in a place called Redfall, Redfall, Massachusetts, where I, which I believe is somewhere outside of Boston. And it sounds like, from what I understand, that the city is put into a quarantine zone from vampires, and the okay. game, the game is four player co op. And Jay, the more that I learned about these characters, the more that I laugh about how much the crow guy is like you. Oh, really? <laughs> and how and how the British journalist guy is a lot like me. <laughs> so I think we I think we already know what characters we're, we're going to be playing with when this game comes out. You're probably right. <laughs> but but it, but I I watched the trailer a hundred times, and it's funny because the the dude the dude with the crow is named Jacob. And he's, okay. he, you know, he's 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 a si he's silent. He's a soldier. He's you know he's the leader. He's the strong type. And then <laughs> there's the fucking the fucking British Indian guy who I compare myself a lot to because he's recording and documenting everything and asking questions. Okay. There's even yeah. there's even a scene where where the the girl's drinking the slurp and she's like, ugh, tastes like vampire in it. And he pulls out his phone. He's like, there is. What does it taste like? Do you think you're gonna get sick? You know, like, so, and, and I'm like, just like, holy shit, that's me. I'm, always, I just want to fucking ask questions. I just want to know about everything. But the game, uh -huh. the game looks really good. It comes out summer 2022. We have a long time until it comes out, but it, 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 that, that does sound like a lot of fun. And that was actually one of the ones that I was also. It, it kind of piqued my interest a little bit, and I, I, I would probably be curious to try it out at least, or at least you know, give give it a whirl, you know, and and take 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 a stab at it, you know, as far as playing a new game or playing something different. I like the idea of being able to play a co-op um, uh, campaign, basically. Like I, I, I love that. I don't know. I don't know why more games are not co-op for the story, for the story mode. You know what I mean? I, I get, I get I multiplayer. I get, I get co-op, you know, like as like an online thing for different games, whatever. I don't know why more games aren't co-op for campaign. Like, wouldn't it be cool to just like play the campaign with your buddy? You know, like I feel like Call of Duty has has missed out on that opportunity so much oh, too. God. For 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 over a decade, for over like what was that game was called? Uh, uh, we mentioned it a couple weeks ago. Was it uh, Army of Two? Army of Two, dude. And you want to know something? It's funny. I was I, I I um I was on my stream the other on my own personal stream the other day um on Twitch, and I was fucking around with it, and a buddy of mine came in and he was playing Army of Two, and we were talking about how classic that game is and how. It pretty much right. paved the way for two pl two player co op games, you know. Right, and then nobody and then nobody did anything with it, like nobody. Shit, like, I'm, I'm about to fucking download Army of Two today. Is it on Game Pass? It's on. I think it's on Game Pass. Oh, I will play that with you, dude. I will play oh, that with we, you. Oh, that that shit. Oh, we, oh, oh, we should. I think that you know what that that's gonna happen. That's gonna happen when you download it. 
you let me know when it's downloaded and we'll play that shit. But that that's a, that but that's definitely but that's a game that really paved the way for co-op because it was a full campaign. And it's not the it's not the co-op bullshit where you play side level missions that are five to ten minutes long. No, you're playing a full on campaign and that's right. what right. I'm very excited about for Redfall. And it's gonna be the same thing for Back for Blood, which is coming straight to Xbox. Uh, game yep. Pass and that that one I'm actually su- I think these new games are are going to be are good because I, I actually see you actually downloading some of these these games these co op games because co op absolutely would I, I I enjoy I enjoy I typically excuse me I typically enjoy campaign and story modes more than some of the online absolutely. stuff absolutely I and, do too you know. And I've I, a lot of times I find myself wishing like somebody else could enjoy it with me, you know, because like you know video games have come a long way since we were kids, and it's, a lot of times it's like it's like you're playing a movie, you know, and so like you're you're you know you you beat a level and there's a little cutscene, and you get really really involved in the story, and a lot of times it's like fuck I wish I was sharing this with somebody I wish somebody was like, you know, watching slash playing this you know quote unquote movie with me. You know, and a lot of games, most games nowadays, they just don't have that. It doesn't exist. It's either somebody sits their ass down next to you on the couch and they can watch you play or that's or you're by yourself and that's it. You know, and I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with getting lost by yourself in a video game once in a while. You know, it's all good. But sometimes I would like to share it. I'd like to I'd like somebody to enjoy the experience with me, you know, like like going to a movie theater, you know, like taking my lady out to the fucking drive in, you know, and just. You know, sharing some snacks and fucking watching a Absolutely. movie. You know, and, that, and you know, maybe making out, maybe making out in the back seat and pretending we were te- teenagers again. I mean, whatever, bro, whatever. Yeah, and you and, know? and, it, and what would piss me off about, like, um, I, I fucking, I, I fucking lost my thought. I, did you, did you, did you smoke your reefer this morning, bro? I did. No, I did, but I, I had it like as soon as I probably need to. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, man, I'm like, oh fuck! <laughs> you all just dis- you all discombobulated, oh, John. Dude, yeah, man. And you know what? I I I fuck, man. I got good. You're good, homie. We were we were talking about uh, cooperative play and freaking story oh, mode. Okay, that that's that's right. So that's what bothers me. Like, so last year there was this whole campaign about saving player saving player one, and I'm just like, why? Who who okay you know I I get I get some I get some people want to fucking um you when know, did I, player one ever go away yeah it's that, always been player one yeah and, what and the fuck? you know like it's, okay you could just fucking play the game by yourself no if you want to play the game by yourself fucking play the game by yourself but we've established a gaming community for us to play together. Because gaming is about coming together now. We build communities through this. Look at look at GTA as fucking toxic as it is. Look at look at the community that's there. Right. You know, the, right. The, right? These you know whether on and I and I personally think that co-op is going to be the way of the future. That's why we need more games like Army of Two and um, A Way Out and It Takes Two and games like that. It's like, dude. Why I, I want to know like why why is everybody getting so fucking scared like like what is there to be scared of, it's 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 change and I understand nobody likes change, but when 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 systems and institutions and organizations evolve, they are naturally by virtue of you know evolution of things they are going to change. What it what in the finger fuck is wrong with games changing, like. I grew up. I grew up. My very first entertainment system was called Intellivision. It was. It's literally a Generation Two console, you know, on on par with basically uh, uh, the Atari. But mine, mine. I had an Intellivision, and if I if I played an Intellivision right now, I mean, I guess I'd give myself bonus points for fucking taking myself back in the day. But it's not going to be the same as playing a game like God of War, or Red Dead Redemption Two, or Ghost of Tsushima. You know, the experience is going to be different. That's, that's because that's because that game, true. you know, yeah, in television came out fucking over 30 fucking years ago. You know, it was like 35 fucking years ago. I was, I was, I was a kid, like a little, little kid, like a kindergartner kid, you know, playing in television. It's a different experience. It changed, stuff changed. Why has it taken this long 
you know, why is it taking this long to in, impact your gaming experience by having it be a shared cooperative experience? I mean, look how long it took for games like Elder Scrolls and Fallout to come into a multiplayer game. You know, those games right. itself. Right. And the same thing with like Metal Gear Solid. Those, those games have always been single player games. But then it... I, I, I don't know. I just don't understand why people feel that that gaming by yourself. I could see in some experiences it could be fun, but who who I I, I fucking you, you get the moments out of playing with others. You know, you get the laughs. I saw I saw this clip the other day um, of these guys in Warzone. They had just they had just come in. They had no weapons, no weapons, and they were at the airport, right? Right. You're ready to laugh. Oh, here we go. They were waiting for... They, they, they found the UAV. They were able to f f see that there was someone coming upstairs up the tower in the elevator. And these three guys with no weapons waited for the guy to come up the elevator. And they fist... They f just punched the shit out of him. Like, it was <laughs> it was the funniest thing. And, you know, but it's moments like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. but it's moments like that, yeah. you know. You know, you can't get moments like that by yourself. You know, the AI the AI is not going to do shit like that for you. And, no, it's not. And no. <laughs> the next and the next game that I actually found that I'm this game I'm actually surprisingly more anticipated for this than I am Starfield and Redfall replaced. You know, I've been I you know, it was that cool dystopian trailer. Well, we got we finally got some some information. Okay. Replaced is a two and a half D. Two and a half D. Sci-fi retro futuristic action platformer where you play as Reach, an artificial intelligence trapped in a human body against its own will. Oh, interesante, as I say in Espanol. Yes, sir. Uh, replace combines cinematic platformer, pixel art, and free flow action combat with a deep, engaging dystopian story set in an alternative, alternative 1980s Phoenix city. Oh, Explore and uncover the mysteries in and around Phoenix City from the perspective of Reach, who is learning how, who is learning how to be human in a society has, that has taken a turn for the worst. Everything is ruled by corruption and greed, and the ones in power see humans and their organs as nothing more than just currency. Interesting. Yeah. That sounds like a fun place to live. Not. <laughs> you know this. This would be. Oh, this would be such a good show. It would be such a good like like Hulu show or something like replace like sure. it, it it sound like just the I mean there's not much out for it but it just sounds so intriguing to me that you know like sure. I, I I need I need to know more who who is the human that they're put that they're putting this AI into you know it I I, I, I need to know the the game. It, 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 I'm so excited for this. It's a it's a new adventure. It's a new adventure into. It's just a brand new fucking game, man. It's just it's it. it I'm excited because I've never wanted to play a game like this so bad before, you know. Because I, I, you know, some of these graphics look silly, but I I want the cinematic experience. I want the. Hey. You know, you know, I mean, you saw the trailer. the 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 dude was walking, talking in a fucking um, like train station, and you hear the bones crack, and then, then boom, boom. Oh, it looks good. The game, the game looks fucking good, and that's I'm down. I'm down. That's what I'm. That's what I'm ready for. And now, the E3 awards. Here we go. Here we go. Uh I don't even know where to fucking start. So like, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go down and say who won first. Okay, okay. Ubisoft most anticip Ubisoft most anticipated game. Ubisoft. Yeah. Mario and Rabbids: Sparks of Hope. Yeah. What the fuck happened? What the fuck happened to Far Cry? Yeah, I was gonna say we watched we watched the Ubisoft. That's not the most anticipated anything. Like what a, what happened? What happened to that, Far Cry? Wasn't that one of the games we talked shit about when we were when we were doing our live stream? On yeah, it? that was the one when I was like boring. Yeah, yeah, boring. Look, <laughs> look, I 
I, I, I have nothing. I, I don't even like you said when we talked about the Indian wedding swap. I, I don't know what to think about this. Far Cry, like what the fuck? Far Cry, um, Gearbox most anticipated game, Tiny Tina's Wonderland, which I, which I understand because of pe- uh, Borderlands has a cult following, so. Yeah, Xbox well, Bethesda most anticipated game. I would like to argue this, but Halo Infinite won that for Xbox Bethesda most anticipated game. I, I get it, but I would like I will I would personally say um Starfield. That's just my personal I, opinion. As 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 usual, like your excitement for that game is hyping is hyping me up. Yeah. So it's one of those things where like you you get all, you get all excited about shit sometimes, and it's like, and then in my head, I'm like, fuck, I I kind of want to, I kind of want to see what he's talking yeah. about. He's like really excited about this now, shit. Now, you know? Halo Infinite, I get why it won most anticipated Xbox game. I get it, I fucking get it, but I just I don't think it's gonna hold the cake. I really don't. Um, it's Halo. It's it's there's no there's nothing wrong with franchise games. There's nothing wrong with yeah. it. You know, inher- inherently at least, there's oh, nothing inherently wrong. I forgot with about this game. game. The Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy game that's coming out. Did you see the the preview for that? I, no, I did not. I'm not I, familiar. I'm gonna have to show that. To you. I'm gonna have to send you that link later. That game actually looks pretty fucking good. I, I okay. That, that will that okay. will definitely get my my fucking seventy dollars. Um, <laughs> PC gaming show. I you know I don't know much about that. Songs of Conquest. People. Were, then the in television in television most anticipated game Dolphin Quest. I don't know what the fuck that is. But anyway, I didn't even I didn't even know a television still existed. Like, um, Breath of the Wild two, which is a Zelda game, got Nintendo most anticipated game. Best presentation was Xbox Xbox and Bethesda showcase, which I'm I, yeah I'm, I'm, I I would agree with that. Now, they, they, Ubisoft fucking sucked dick, dude. Like they fucking they I, were fucking Far they were Cry. Dick. Far Cry was their only good presentation, and now it really was. This is this is. This is where I get a little confused. The most anticipated game overall. Take a guess. Uh, I'm based off based off of your body language and general like discontent with your voice, uh, it's probably gonna be something fucking stupid. So you're gonna have to, you know, they they they, they announce like. 30 plus games so you have to it's gonna be it, it's forza horizon 5 was most anticipated overall game that's dude this is so rich it's so fucking rigged like that like i don't even know what game you're talking about like it's not anticipated for shit like yeah, I, don't even, yeah, I don't even exactly I don't even hearing sides. you talk about a fucking rigged like award system right there like yeah, they everything, everything is fucking wrong on this yeah everything and, is and here wrong. and here's the thing that really that piss that pissed me off so much about it Okay, Forza Horizon Five looks great, but last year they they showed Forza Motorsport Eight. Where the fuck is Forza right. Motorsport Eight? People want to see Motorsport Eight more than they want to see Horizon Five. Two, there are at are. least five different games that I could choose that were way better than Forza Horizon Five. Oh, minimum, minimum. You know? I mean, we're talking, dude. Fuck, dude. Fuck this, dude. Like this is this is this is where it, it gets really easy to tell. That somebody Cigarette. fucking somebody made like a somebody made like a casual fucking donation to somebody else, and it's like, hey, uh, I'm gonna make a donation to your cause, and you're gonna give us the award for fucking X, Y, or Z. No, not much different than you know a fucking lobbyist um, making a donation to a congressman on behalf of a fucking corporation to make sure that our fucking like national policy yep. is basically like. Fuck the people and bow down to the fucking almighty dollar, you know. Like, like that's exactly what it is. Somebody, somebody got fucking paid. Like, I, I don't even. I, I still don't even know. Like, what is it? A fucking racing game? Like, it sounds fucking like ridiculous. And it's a that's good game. Stupid. It's a good game. I actually played with some of our DD two fourteen members on it. You know, it's a it's a fun yeah, game. Like, but you know, if you're not if you're not like into, said, they announced they announced one last year. They haven't even released that yet. And the and yeah. the one they announced. And the one they announced this year is coming which, up. Is coming up before the one that they announced last year. And they, yeah, what a bunch of fucking shit. I, I, I call fucking bullshit like so hardcore. Dude. Like fuck that. Now, fuck that. Now, fuck this, them. Now, now this is what like, I start ranting. Here we go. Here we fucking go. 
E3 is the fucking standard of 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 developers showing off what they have worked on. It's supposed to be at least, you know. This was not an award show. This was an op-ed ed- editorial of who they who they personally feel. And this was by and this was voted on by by the editors of of IGN um e3 uh game informer all these fucking editors choosing these fucking things why and they're out of touch they're out of touch and 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 second of all do you it wasn't there, there was no stage there was no okay i get no audience but there no one was there to accept their awards no there was no certificate no participation no participation trophy <laughs> There isn't. There wasn't anything. You know, they didn't even get to accept their awards. And when I when I hear award show, the the fucking game awards was was way better than this. And that and that show was shit. Yeah, it was dog shit. It, it, it dude. It, this this last I'm gonna say probably the last eight ish months. You know, let's go back to like maybe like November ish time frame. There hasn't been fucking shit coming out of the gaming industry there hasn't been a fucking thing it's been it's just it's been fucking it's, it's crickets. Been shit dude been crickets. and they're not and they're and they're and they're still not giving anything you, know, and like, you brought up a good point in the chat too a lot of these guys were home working working they had all the time in the world last year what else did they have time to do last year we were fucking everybody and they're fucking everybody and their mom was cooped up for almost an entire fucking year. Look, look at look at Black Ops. Black Ops started development when coronavirus started, and they f- finished the game on time at home. They finished right. the whole game at home. The actors did motion capture in their own homes. Correct. Correct. You know they they finished. You know, and okay, I get it. Not every studio is is Activision. Not every studio is Infinity Ward or Treyarch. Right. But you guys had the time. Yeah, there's no, there's, there's no, there's no excuse. Like, there's zero excuse right now. You know, this go, this harkens back to our our, pre, our prior conversations about me, uh, me uh, getting a next gen console. Like, what the fuck do I need a next gen console for right now? Nothing is coming out. Nothing has been announced for fucking the, the PS5 or the fucking Series X Xbox. Nothing is coming out. They haven't announced shit. Like, it's all, it's like. You you just you just you just busted out a brand new console, and there's nothing happening. Like, why the fuck would I drop my money when there's no when there's nothing to fucking play on it? What the fuck is the no, point? No, you're absolutely right. And and you know, like I have to say, like some titles caught my attention. Like Microsoft Flight Simulator is coming to next gen. I'm definitely considering I'm going okay next gen for that. I I would be okay with that too, but I, but I probably can't. I can't really justify. Uh, dropping that kind of money on a next gen console for what for that one game though that's the problem no absolutely absolutely you know like that's that's one of those things where like yeah i'm just gonna sit sit on the fucking i'm just gonna sit on it for like two or three yep. years and wait until there's like a library to actually explore you know what i mean like one game one game is and playing one game is, is really fun and it's great and it's awesome but that's you know microsoft flight simulator is kind of a, a once in a generation game I can wait for that, and I, I and I and that. I play it on PC, man. Let me tell you, it it, it is it is it is so it is so. I caught myself playing a little bit uh, the other night. I was playing for like two or three hours, just flying around. I was like, damn, this is fucking, oh, yeah. this is fun, man. This is, there is, any, is there is there any, is there any cooperative thing in there? Like, can you fly with I a friend? I think there is. Ooh, I think there is. Fun. That might be fun. So yeah, like I I, I don't know, man. I, I'm. I've been really, really disappointed in the gaming industry. Like, I bought, I didn't get, I was, I was kind of late. I was kind of late to the game. I did not get, I didn't get the PS4 until um, I came back from Afghanistan on my last tour in November of 2018. Yeah. So I was kind of late to the, I was kind of late to the game for for the PS4. I specifically bought that that system because of God of War. You know, which is a PlayStation exclusive, and then Red Dead Redemption Two had just come out, and then and then so later thought, Ghost of Tsushima came out, and you and it, dove into that. And it, yeah, and, and that was and that was that was like last year. That was late. That was late last year. Yeah. And that's, you know, that that's one of those things where it was worth it for me to drop the money to buy a new console because I knew I was going to be spending time 
you know, diving into some of these, some of the worlds. The PS5, the Series X, Xbox, I, I haven't seen a fucking thing. Microsoft Flight Simulator, as you said, I can get that for a fucking, I can get that on my laptop. I don't need a fucking new that, goddamn that's console. That's true, yeah. That game. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that game, that game is not going to buy, not going to justify me buying a new console. Like, why would I buy a new, co- a new console when there's... They're not. There's nothing out right now that they're doing that's any better than fucking uh, the Xbox One or the fucking PS4. Yeah, and it goes to show too because um, a lot of the games that are, that are already on next gen are on the Game Pass on PC right now. Right. So like you could sp- right. you could spend a good twelve hundred dollars on 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 the PC like mine, and be able to play the game with no issue instead of, and and then not just play that game but play a plethora of games. That are between PlayStation as well, you know, games that are on PlayStation as well that you're not available to because you don't, you know, maybe you don't have a PlayStation, but they are available on PC. So with the, you know, and that's why I'm happy that I, because I've I've literally been playing more of my PC lately more than anything, which is, I don't blame you, <laughs> I don't blame you. It's it's pretty it's pretty I like I like Warzone. I only play Warzone now on on my PC. That's it. Right. That 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 that's literally completely it, and you know it. it this is the time. Yeah, yeah. I don't have. I don't really have a good anything to say to what you're talking about because it, there, there's nothing nice to say. They had a whole fucking year. Yeah. The entire industry. The entire industry had a whole year, and nothing. Nothing is coming out. E3 fucking sucked. Yeah. The pre- the, the, the like presentation. Sony, Sony didn't even fucking show up. I mean, that that, that, that by itself is like. Sony, Sony's just basically saying "fuck you" to everybody, yeah, and, which which they all which which they always do. To, like I, I, I've this, ranted about I've ranted, I've ranted about Sony as a corporation like many times on here. Like Sony, Sony can fucking take a diamond and, and you'll get handed back a polished turd. Like so, fuck Sony in general. But I mean, it's like like how did you how did you have a whole fucking year just isolated and by yourself and alone with all of your people and not fucking produce? Like they didn't do a fuck it. Like the whole industry is just face planning right now. There's there's no there's no n- new gaming news. Nothing exciting coming out. Like we 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 you and me have been bitching for like it's been months now. Like the last like the last two months straight. Like no gaming news this week. No gaming news this week. You know like fuck us. It's, dude. it's, like, it's been you know it, how are we supposed to do our fucking jobs? Come right. on guys. Come on guys. Right. But but even here it's uh, you know just one day ago. PlayStation Experience may be making a comeback in 2021. How come? How come, you know they have shit to show? They have shit to show, especially um, they, their their IP Uncharted is coming out with a movie with Mark Wahlberg and Tom Holland, and they they could even show that they have something to show. So what what is going on? Yeah, like I, I uh, well I'll tell you what's going on because it's 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 fairly typical when you involve you know massive like multinational mega mega corporate conglomerates uh it, the consumer's getting fucked right now the consumer's just getting fucked yeah they're just, they're just basically saying like you know they're, they're dangling they're dangling a carrot off of a stick except we're fucking running towards a cliff right now like there's there's nothing happening there's literally nothing happening like my my my, my, my xbox in my room and my ps4 in the living room have just been sitting fucking dead for like weeks now yeah I'm not, I ain't doing shit on any of it. Like I, I'm, I'm bored. I'm bored. There's, there's I see. You, I see you going on Hulu more than anything now. Yeah, there you go. And I'm not even a big TV watcher. Yeah. Which, by the way, uh, I started a, a TV show. Um, it's a. Uh, I want to say it's on uh, HBO Max. I think it's um, Love Lovecraft Country. Oh, Very. I've been wanting to fucking watch that. That's like that's like a it's like a time it's like a timepiece show and like it's got yeah, like it's, fantasy it's, shit like that yeah yeah it's set in the 1950s and um yeah it's 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 me 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 and my lady we only we've only gone through one episode so far not in, i'm not entirely sold on it yet um i've only gone through one episode but very very interesting to to say the least it's 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 set in the 1950s and it's a um the, the the main characters are, are African American, and if you remember, or if you know your history, in the 1950s there was still Jim Crow laws and segregation. Yeah, yeah. It's set it's set during that time period, and so there's there's some very interesting elements to it. And then they and then they kind of hit you in the face with this like fantastical like 
you know, horror, science fiction, whatever the fuck, monster shit. And it's like, wait, what? Like, what? You yeah, know, like, yeah, that that's that's what intrigued me about the show when I saw the previews for it because that there there was like a bit of a, a plot twist that changed like the whole like oh yeah the whole like oh, direction of the show that and I, I've been very interested in watching it so that's definitely one because we just finished um, Handmaid's Tale okay you know okay. which which I mean look the first like two the two seasons were were horror porn. But if uh-huh. if you got like if you got the stomach to to understand the story, then it's it's actually very very good. But what was interesting about this season is that one when one good thing happened, a worse thing happened right after that. You know, and that and that you know the show. I I'm in, I love the show. I think I think it's a fantastic. I think it's probably the closest reality that we could possibly have. That you know, I mean, you know, you know what that the book was based on, right? Oh, of like, course, yeah. So I mean, it's you know, I don't want you know, we we don't like getting too political. On yeah, the yeah. But the but book, it, the, it, it, it the sounds. Book, the book, the book, yeah, the book the book that that was that that TV show was based on is, you know, a very you know. And we're talking about ni- we're talking about 1984 too. That I believe yeah. that's when the book came out. So if you you know if you yeah. put the times it's together, not, yeah, it's not it's not very it's not it's it's not too much to say that like it was it was it was very it was very much based on a a very possible future if certain certain trends continue, you know, to their evolutionary end. Yeah, and and it's become and relevant it, again. Certain, Scary yeah, and, and and if and if certain pe- if certain people and certain entities and certain power structures are allowed to just run rampant, run rampant, you know that's a society that could very possibly be a reality. Yeah. And you know, and and to go off of that, I mean, having gone to a place like Afghanistan three times in my life, and I've I've spent two and a half years of my life in in a place like Afghanistan. Yeah. Um. On, on, on a slightly different level, it's a different level, but but very much in the same ballpark. I've been to, I've been to countries that are subjugated like that. Like the people are subjugated. They they live in they lose in a, fear. they literally lose a finger for like you know yeah they, they they live in they live in fear for the elites that are in charge. Whether the elites are religious or whether whether the elites are a power structure or a a uh, political uh, ide- ideology. You know, you you see this. This has already happened uh, in different places around the world, and I love I love. Obviously, we we love our country. We 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 signed up to fucking fight for it. We fought for it. You know, we 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 gave a lot of our our lives to defend. You know, the ideal the ideals of the the American institution. But but to but for anybody to say that it could never happen here, you know, you're on a fool's errand. Yeah, it can. It can happen anywhere. It doesn't matter what the country is. It can happen anywhere. You know what I mean? You saw you saw the Fr- the the French the French had the revolution uh, very shortly after uh, the American Revolution, and what and what ended up happening? Fucking Napoleon. Fucking twenty years later, they they ended up having a fucking dictator. You know what I mean? After after a revolution that was supposed to topple you know the 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 wealthy and the 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 elite and the monarchy, right? And 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 and, and he's got the highest win ratio ever. He does. And, and, and that's, you know, and that's one of the, you know, just goes to show you like, you know, people can have the right idea, but if it's not executed properly, you're just going to end up right, right back at fucking square one. Yeah. Oh, and for yeah. anybody, you know, the, 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 the great experiment as they, as they like to refer to the United States of America as the great experiment succeeded very, very much. Oh, so. yeah. But there's also, there's also a lot of flaws in the system. And for people to think that that could never happen here you know, you're, you're fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself. And when we allow some of these um, giant mega multinational conglomerates to wield power, and especially to wield power politically, i.e. fucking using lobbyists to, you know, tell your your local congressmen and senators to pass certain laws that are in favor of these fucking shitbag fucking corporations, corporations like fucking Nestle, which fucking gets fucking water, fresh water, for fucking less, literally less than pennies on the dollar, you know, and just fucking hoard it and use it, you know, like we're talking about water rights. Uh, if you guys want to fucking do a quick Google Google search, Google fucking Lake Mead right now. Yeah. The oh Lake, yeah. Lake the Lake Mead Reservoir is fucking like, it's dying, you know, like the Colorado River 
the Colorado River feeds and supports several me- major cities in the, in, the, in the American Southwest, and it, we're, they're running out. They're running out of water. Like, and a lot of it is, is due to, you know, ownership rights and where that water goes and, wh- and where, what that water is used for. And it's it's bullshit. And you know, and we, we're ha- we're in we're in the fate we're facing massive droughts. You know, like fire season has is upon us again. You know what I mean? Like cer- some places are Sakai, getting like zero rain. Are, are are back again too. I'm telling you, dude. You, you know, it's I'm not trying to be like the negative Nancy this morning, but it's no. it's one of these things where like when when you watch trends, and especially as you, as you get older, and the older you get, you see trends happen. And when you keep watching these trends. And it's like the people in charge aren't doing a fucking thing. Absolutely. They aren't doing a fucking thing. Like people in Texas right now, like the fucking, uh, what's oh, it? Oh, er- 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 ERCOT, Scott, yeah. Like, ERCOT, you're right, ERCOT. The fuck you will. The- they fucking, <laughs> they failed so fucking miserably when Texas had that winter storm. Over a hundred people died because that, and, and that's, that's, that's the, that's just what we know. The number might be a lot higher. There's a lot of people that think a lot more people died. And, Over a hundred people and they're died. Still, and they're still dealing with like the residuals of all that too. And now, and now it got hot. This, you know, we're, we're, we're you know, the 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 American West is going through a massive heat wave right now. And now they're telling their fucking consumers, "Hey, uh, keep your keep your thermostat at fucking seventy eight, you know, and 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 turn it off and let let it sit dude. at eighty two at night." It's like fuck That's, you, dude. Who sleeps fuck at you. who sleeps at eighty two though? I don't. I mean, I, I've done it in the field, oh, in the fucking you know? army, right? Like these yeah. are your, these are these are your customers. It's the it's the consumer. Dude, it's like what forty. Fucking, it's what like product are you? I what sleep, product are you providing? Yeah, because you know I, mean? I, sl- I sleep at like forty five degrees every night. You know, you're insane. You know, you're insane. Forty five <laughs> to fifty degrees. My air conditioner's on. I, I I like to make sure that my fucking that my drool is is freezing by the time I wake up. <laughs> you know. I, Oh man, but but it's it's very crazy. It's very weird how you know the show has a lot of similarities to to what's going on today. But it's a good show, and uh, we just started Loki too, which is on its second second episode. Dude, right? if if you're if you're ever confused about the the fucking timeline, watch this show because it breaks it down the first like five minutes of the show. There you go. Are you, are you talking about the uh, the Marvel yep. cinematic universe? Yep, they, but it's good. And now, um, you know, yesterday was Juneteenth. Hell yeah, very, very, happy, you, June. happy Juneteenth to everybody. You know, this is this is, bit, you know, I don't, you know, when I think of when I think about today compared to last year, mm-hmm. how. Everyone was fighting for this day to be recognized, and you know, I didn't, right. I like, I didn't know that June nineteenth was the day that you know that that everything was was put to an end. I I didn't know that. So when I learned that last year, it was very powerful for me, you know, especially because right. I I I grew up in a in a multicultural neighborhood, you know, right. and, and you know, right next door to that multicultural neighborhood, there was Jersey City, which was you know predominantly African American. In, okay. in some parts and so i grew up i grew so being around these people and being around these cultures was so amazing for me to be a part of because i got a little bit of everything you know it, it, it was really cool and 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 it's what's actually really cool what i thought was coming into the army there was a lot more people of color than i thought and i couldn't have felt more comfortable in boot camp and Fort Lee and going into Fort Benning, being being around being around you guys, it's 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 you know it's it's, it's how it's supposed to be. America America is a melting pot. Yeah, and 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 I and I love I love see I love seeing it because there's so there's so many successful African Americans in the army and the and, and 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 I just feel like it's 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 so right because of the history that the U.S. Army has. Right. Yeah. We and 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 as I was. I, and I previously said, you know, like the great, the great, you know, the United States is called the great experiment. And that we, we have, we have had several big stumbling blocks in our history that have, have, have given, you know, cause for concern. And we had to pause and hit, the, you know, pump the brakes a little bit because we're like, no, this is not right. And some, and some of those lessons took a lot longer to learn than others. You know, our, our country was torn apart during the civil war 
over the over the issue of slavery. And it still took over a hundred years after the Civil War before the fucking Civil Rights Act was ever passed. You know, it, it is not that far in history. It is not that far back in history um, that people were still segregated because uh, because certain entities, certain power structures were placated after the Civil War, specifically in the South, that allowed this to occur. You know, I was born in 1981. 1981 is closer in time to 1965 when the Civil Rights Act was passed than the amount of time that has passed since 9-11. So it was not that long ago. It was not that fucking long ago. Like, it was still okay to have separate bathrooms for African Americans and white people. And what a bunch of yeah. fucking bullshit. What a bunch of fucking bullshit. It was not that long ago. And I just, you wanna, know, like, and I just want to add in ahead. too, um, while living in Fort Benning, um, my wife and I came, well, not, not me, my wife came across a funeral home that was only served, that was not serving um, Caucasian individuals. Right. Which, right. Which I thought was very because interesting. They, because they still, they st- because a lot of, in, in, in different parts of the South, they still get treated like shit. Yeah. They're, 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 and, and I've seen it, it. I've seen it. It's become, yeah, it's become a cultural thing. And I, and I, and how do you blame, how do you blame African Americans for turning around and, and, and flipping that coin back on, on Caucasians, you know, when that's how they've been treated They're not, not just their entire lives, their entire like generational history, their entire generational history, their, their grandfather, their grandfather's grandmothers, you know, their mothers and fathers, their great, great, great their great grandparents, all the way fucking dating back to like the civil war and before the civil war when they were fucking slaves. What a crock of shit. I always, I always ask myself the question, like it's a very philosophical question. Like how many fucking Einsteins did we lose by enslaving other human beings? There was probably an Einstein out there who just happened to be a person of color. And we lost, we lost that person to history and and their, their name will never be known. Their grave is unmarked. They are lost to history because we thought it was okay to fucking enslave people. People thought they was they people thought they had a literal god given right to enslave another human being. What a fucking crock of shit, you know. You want to talk about fucking freedom, man? That's definitely not it. That's definitely not there. There is no freedom to enslave another person because freedom is freedom. All human beings should be fucking free, free to think, free to talk, free to open their minds and be educated, free to become the best possible version of themselves, ever. And a lot of those people in history have not had that freedom, even up to this day, have not had that freedom because they're, 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 they're subjugated by fucking class. They're subjugated by structure. They're, stru- they're, they're subjugated by virtue of the color of their goddamn skin. So fuck that. And, and, and yes, it's a, it's, it's a wonderful thing that Juneteenth is now a federal fucking holiday. Like, it's a great thing. And I, I know you've got a story, and I love this story, and I want I you do. to tell it about... I want you to tell I want you to tell our our viewers and listeners about the history of the Harlem Hellfighters. Like what a fucking wonderful fucking story yeah, that is. This this uh, this was a World War 1 group. Afri- and I'm and I'm going to read it um word, word it's a, it's a not that big of an article, small article, but I'm going to read I'm going to read it. So Let's hear it. All right. So uh, did you know that before this is coming from the USO, uso.org guys. So did you know that before the American, the African American National Guard soldiers of the New York's 15th Infantry Regiment became known as the famed Black Rattlers, men of bronze or hellfighters of Harlem, they had to just fight to see combat in World War One. But when they arrived in France in December 1917, they expected to conduct combat training and enter the trenches, trenches of the Western Front right away, but they were wrong. Those troops were ordered to unload supply ships at the docks for the first months in France, joining the mass of supply troops known as stevedores, working long hours in the port of Nazaire. So we're already, he, you know, they're coming into the army. They they want to fight, but they're you know now they're just being put to work. More than three hundred and eighty thousand African Americans served in the, in the army during World War One, and according to the National Archives, approximately two hundred thousand of these were sent to Europe. But more than half of those who deployed were assigned to labor and stevedore battalions, assigned to tasks that many leaders at the time saw as most appropriate. These troops performed essential duties from American Expeditionary Force building roads, build bridges, trenches, in support of the front line battles. Um, 
In St. Nazir, the New York National Guard soldiers learned they would work to prepare the docks and railway lines to a major port of entry for the hundreds of thousands of forces yet to arrive in France. The African American Regiment was quick and easy source of labor, according to author Stephen Harris in his 2003 book Harlem's Hellfighters. Happy Father's Day, Joe. Oh, you're not the father, my bad, but happy Father's Day to your daddy. <laughs> He's a, he's a son. He's got a dad. Yes, sir. Happy Father's Day, Joe. Happy Father's Day. And thank, you for, thank you for tuning in, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, but the 15th Regiment soldiers had not signed up for labor. They were committed to fighting the Germans and winning the war. They had no place to put the regiment. Said, <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Fucking Joe, dude. <laughs> I'm a fur dad. This oh, is God. a fur dad. That, yeah, that, that's, that's actually that's my, my best bud right there, man. Third, third, third ID. There's actually it's funny. There's a lot of third ID guys up in this chat right now. <laughs> Good. Um, but that's right. We got, we got your six two, homie. We got your six two. Yep. So Captain Hamilton Fish said they had no place to put the regiment. According to according to the Harris book, they weren't going to put us in in a white division. Not in 1917 anyway. So our troops were sentenced to the supply and services as laborers to lay railroad tracks. This naturally upset our men tremendously. So then, the regiment commander, the regiment's best advocate to get into the fight was Commander Colonel William Hayward. In quote, it was time for us to try to do something towards extricate, extricating ourselves from the dirty mess of pick swinging and wheelbarrow trundling that we are in. Hayward said that to Captain Arthur Little, commander of the regimental band. We had to come to France. We had come to France as combat troops, and apparently, we were in danger of becoming labor troops. Hayward argued his case in a letter to General John Pershing, outlining the regiment's mobiliz mobilization and training, and followed up immediately with a personal visit to Pershing's headquarters. Awesome. This this yep. dude this dude so so Colonel Hayward was you know he he knew the value of of a soldier no matter who you were what you were right if, that's if, right you know if you're there if, you know that if you're there for the job you're there for a fucking job you know you're a human you're a human being you're a human being yep you're a human being and, and think think of all think of all the fucking kings the giants of the giants among men you know that that have that have that have been also african-american throughout throughout our history in this country they've done they've done amazing amazing things and they've proven every fucking time that it's it's just a color of skin you're still a human being you're still you're still a fighter you're still you're still kings and queens you, it, you the color of the skin does not fucking exactly. matter you're a human fucking being no. you know and that you know and that's john john is going to be visiting me um in kansas city in about uh a little bit about a month and a half yeah, about a month and a half we're going to be we're going to be seeing each other in kansas city and I'm looking forward to showing John the uh, the National World War One Museum, which happens to be happens to be in Kansas City, and um, they gotta have something about this there too. Oh, I guarantee you they do. I guarantee you they do. There's there's all kinds of stuff in there, brother. I, I it's really really amazing to to see it in person. Like when like if you know, I've only been there once, and I went there, I went there, right after, right after I reclassed the infantry when. My youngest was still a baby. We went there for the we went there for a summer trip, and my homies from Fort Leonard Wood when I was from when I was a mechanic all visited. That's so like fucking cool. Yeah. So like you, you know I, I, when uh, when we had uh, Staff Sergeant Bodet on on here, um, him and the rest of the four horsemen we, as we called ourselves, uh. all all visited. Every brought they brought their they brought their kids. They brought their ladies. <laughs> I was there with my ex wife and my kids. And we all we all went to the the World War One Museum together, and it was a really good time, and we we had a blast. And I I'm looking forward to having a blast with you, my friend. No, with, dude, with our, it's with, with our families. There's gonna be you know so, there's gonna be so much to talk about. And yeah, Nick, yeah, Nikki, Nikki's looking forward to to meeting you guys, and you know, um, my kids will be there, and your kids will be there, and we can it's gonna we be can do crazy. It like, it's it's yeah, gonna, we can. It's gonna be a fun weekend. Oh yeah, I, I, and I, I swear to God, I'm gonna I'm gonna. You got to tell Francesca, at least Francesca, because Nikki doesn't do roller coasters either. You got to tell Francesca, I need at least one more adult, because I got both of my kids. I got both of my kids wanting to do the the, the biggest roller coaster there. It's called the Mamba. I, I think I both think of, 
I, I need I need somebody else to sit with with one of my kids. Yeah, like I, I, th- I think my wife I think my wife is gonna do it. She's she's I'm a pussy when it comes to that stuff. But then again, remember I get motion sickness, so we'll see what happens, man. Yeah, I we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll do something. Yeah, don't man, work. Yeah, but but yeah, like <laughs> it's gonna be a good time. And and there's a lot of rich. There's a lot of rich African American history in Kansas City as well. You know, you talk about like the jazz clubs and, you know, some of these, you know, the 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 musical culture. You know, you go but you go back to the 1930s with uh, with old, old style, you know, blues and bluegrass, which a bit which which eventually evolved into what we have now, which is called rock and roll. That came that came from the African American community. You know, there's a lot of people in in rock and roll history that will point to a guy by the name of Little Richard as the actual king of rock and roll versus, you know, the king, king, Elvis Presley. Elvis, the the big argument in the rock and roll community is that Elvis just made rock and roll popular for white people. Little Richard was doing it a long time before he was, basically. And, and, and you got and you got B.B. King, too, you know? B, oh, God, it's so many. And uh, what, what was the name of the dude, um, the Crossroads dude, the guy that, there's the old, uh, there's the old tale that he sold his soul to the devil. To be able to play oh, the guitar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh fuck, I, I, I can't remember that. I can't remember I'm that at all. Pulling right I'm pulling it up right now. Uh. And and you know what's funny, Jay? That we're talking about music and we're talking about jazz. Robert Johnson. Yeah, Robert Johnson. His name was Robert Johnson. Uh, it's actually- Robert Johnson was a was a blues player, and the story goes that he was from the deep south. He's from Mississippi, and. He, for a long time, people he would go around trying to play his guitar, and he wasn't really that good. And his contemporaries even said he wasn't that good. And then he disappeared for like several months. And when he came back, all of a sudden he was the best guitarist anybody had ever heard. You know, and he was he was a he was a black man living in the deep south, and basically like living life. He was a, he was a legend, like just living life. Oh yeah. You know, and and yeah, like Robert Johnson. Like you you want to talk about like the grandfather of rock and roll? That would be Robert Johnson. It was a black man and what a beautiful a beautiful history you know that that it was it was brought to us as part of our country it's part of our culture you know and to and to recognize Juneteenth as a federal holiday is such a giant step in the right direction absolutely in the right and and, final it's, and it's so funny that that we that we're talking about music because that that's what changed that's what changed the commander's mind it says here the commander would bring with him the regiment's most most formidable, formidable. formidable. weapon in swaying opinion, the regimental band, lauded as one of the finest in the entire expeditionary force. When the when the regiment literally laid the tracks for the arrival of the two million troops deploying to France, the regimental band toured the region, performing for French and American audiences at rest centers and hospitals. The regimental band is credited with introducing jazz to music to France during the war. The military band would frequently perform a French march followed by traditional band scores such as Stars and Stripes Forever. And then came the fireworks. The band vocalist and organizer in Harris' account as the 369th band would play as if they were in a jazz club back in Harlem. In the middle of war. After three months of labor, constructing nearby railways to move supplies forward, the regiment soldiers learned that they had orders to join the French 16th Division for three weeks of combat training. That's badass. Yep, so then they also learned that they had a new regimental number as na- as the now-renamed 369th Infantry Regiment. Not that it mattered much to the soldiers, because they still carried their old nickname, the New York Black Rattlers. That would be a fucking great. A name. That would be such a good baseball team name. The New oh, York, yeah, the, the New York Black Rattlers. Rattlers. There you go. The black troops would see combat, but alongside French forces who were already accustomed to many races and ethnicities, already serving in the ranks of their colonial troops. That breaks my heart. That that, because again, we're 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 diving right back to what we were talking about not so long about about France, how they've always been our ally. And they, you know, they don't, they were, they were accustomed to many races and ethnicities already serving in the ranks of their colonial troops. Like that, that, that just, that one sentence in itself is, 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 it just says so much. It says so much, but I'm happy that they were finally given a chance. Absolutely. 
And then uh, it says here, after learning valuable lessons in trench warfare from the French partners, the soldiers of the 369th finally had their chance to prove their worth as combat troops when they entered the front lines, holding their line against the last German spring offensive near Chateau Theory. The hell fighters from Hardham leave a legacy as acclaimed fighters. Their value was not lost on the French, and the regiment continued to fight alongside French f forces. They had come into their own in spite of their difficult start. The regiment will go on to prove itself in combat operations throughout the rest of the war, receiving France's highest military honor, the Croc de, de Guerre, for its unit actions alongside some 171 individual decorations for heroism. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much to the Harlem Hellfighters. Yes, sir. Thank you very much to the Harlem Hellfighters. Yes, sir. Bye. And I just, you know, one, one uh, person... Um, there's a Medal of Honor recipient that I was reading about. Uh, he's a Medal of Honor recipient, Purple Heart, two-time Purple Heart recipient, uh, Private Henry William Henry Johnson. Um, from what I understand, he got his Medal of Honor. Um, he got the Medal of Honor posthumously in 2015 um, by by President Barack Obama during that time. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, it, it, there were a lot. Yeah, and so here's a, uh, a historical low point for our, not only our country but our military as well. In in all of World War II, not a single African American was awarded uh, a Medal of Honor, and that was during World War II. And a lot of them have since received pos posthumous Medals of Honor, but a lot of them just have gone unrecognized for their for their actions, and. You know, we're, we're we've taken steps in the military to, I guess, make up for that, I guess. But it's one of those things where, again, people let, you know, biases and, you know, um, you know, their, you know, the hate, the hate just was so steeped in our culture that they weren't even considered. They just weren't considered. And that's, you know, the, the TV show I told you about that I'm watching it, it, it's really hard to watch at certain points because it, it used to be like that. And it was all the way, you know, this, the TV show is it's based in the 1950s. It's based in the 1950s. And that's a, that's and, a whole, that's a whole different, like that was a, just, just the, 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 the vibe of people during that time. It was, it was, it yeah. was, it was kind of like how it is today in a way where people weren't, weren't hiding it. Right. And it, and it, and it was a lot, and it was a lot. Yeah. If you can imagine it being like, like, uh, magnitudes magnitudes of order worse where it wasn't just people weren't just weren't just not hiding it they would like actively like come after you yeah. you know and be, you know beat you down kill you whatever just for being in the wrong town or the wrong county or the wrong fucking place after sunset you know they, they make they make mention uh in that tv show of uh, something called a, a sunset town and if you're not familiar with the term sunset town what well, a sunset town was back in the jim crow jim crow days a sunset town was a town where it was not safe to be African American in that town after sunset. So basically, like if you come into a sunset town and the sun goes down, whatever happens happens, and nobody's going to get in trouble for it. So it's one of those things where, you know, there were a lot of places that just were not safe. It was not safe to be African American, and and I'm glad that we we have taken several big steps, you know, in the right direction since those days. We still have a long way to go. We still have a long way to go Absolutely. and I want to encourage everybody to remember that we are all human beings on this planet and here in the greatest country that has ever been known to man, the United States of America, you know, we are all human beings and we're a melting pot. It doesn't matter what your skin color is and it never will matter. You're still a human being and we here at DD214 Gaming love, love everyone for who they are. Absolutely. We don't give a fuck. We don't give a fuck about skin color. We don't give a fuck about you know, religion. We don't give a fuck about your sexual orientation. We welcome you all because we are, you know, we are all, we are definitely all inclusive here because we fought for that right. We fought for that right to have that freedom to be whoever the fuck you are. You know, so again, I don't, I don't like getting too political on this podcast. No, of course. But I, but I'm a big believer in freedom. Big, big believer in freedom. And I believe in, I believe in freedom and, and human rights for all, for everyone. Absolutely. Okay. So. And, and I just want to say too that again, like I was saying, that I just felt like the army and and African Americans are just they they're just so intertwined. They're just with the 
you know, with the with the controversial history to what the army is today, and I I, I feel like, you know, I I've never felt more safe in an environment before than being in the army around around uh, pe- people people uh, people of color, and now. You know, we remember a lot of a lot of our African American veterans. And I'm not just talking about the celebrity ones like Montel Williams and Morgan Freeman and Ice T, um, James Earl Jones. You know, I'm talking about guys like Ronnie J. I'm talking about guys like Deshaun Myers, guys like Henry Johnson and Alwyn Cash, Melvin Morris, yep. Oleta Crane. You know, it's yeah. It, you guys. These are our brothers and sisters. Yeah. Just like just like just like anybody else would be our brothers and sisters. Like and and to not to not recognize a person because of the, the color of their skin is it's such a ridiculous concept in our minds today in 2021. But like we said earlier, it, it was not that long ago where they would have been judged, not by the content of their character, but because they happen to be born with with a, with, a, with a darker shade of skin. And what a bunch of fucking bullshit that yeah. is, you know? What a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, I and again, like I grew up in a very multicultural town. So I feel like I was I was very lucky to learn of different cultures at a young age compared to some some you know, to some people who don't know culture. You know? I, I feel like I feel like I was very lucky to, to grow up in an in an environment like that because it helped me sh- understand people more. You know? That, uh, I hear you. So you're from Kansas City. I'm sure this, it's multicultural there too, because it's a big city. You know. Oh yeah. So it's, and, so it's the and, same thing yeah. for you. Yeah, and grow and and I, you know, and growing up when I I grew up in uh, I was born in Kansas City and I grew up in Tucson, Arizona, and obviously Tucson, Arizona, uh, it's 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 predominantly predominantly more Hispanic, but of course I also grew up around a lot of African Americans, and um, I know you've seen the picture on my Facebook of two of my two of my brothers from Tucson, you know, one, one is black and one is, one is Mexican. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's Mexican Indian. And it's like, but we were, we, the three of us were, were best friends and we, we still stay in touch to this day. Like every time I go back to Arizona, I see them and we took, there's a picture that my mom took or one of, one of our moms took when we were knee high to a grasshopper. And it's the three of us together, you know, like hugging each other and just, you know, posing for the camera. So every, every couple of years, we'll take another picture you know, throughout Same the years, the way, way we've, I've got a picture of us 30, 30 years after that picture was taken and we're all adults now, we're all grown, we got kids of our own and we're still, we're still homies, you know, it, di- it didn't matter then and it does not matter now. Yeah. You know, so. And that's what it's all yeah. about, man. That's what it's all about. And we're, oh shit, we're here. Holy shit, we're here. Look at it. There it is. Yeah, we here. made it. Yeah. Um, before we get to the final thought. Make sure you guys join us next week for our one-year anniversary of the DD214 Gaming Podcast. Can you believe it? It's, we made it a full year. It's, it's, and let me tell you, we have a lot to talk about next week. I'm uh, looking forward to it. Uh, I really it's, am. It's going to be, um, you know, you guys... You know, I'm. I, I I'll tell you guys the history, the history story, my my side of the history next week. But you know, I, I'm being being a part of this with you because me and you have literally been on been on every single fucking episode. That's right. It's it's been a fucking honor to know you, Jay. Honestly, I I just it's been an honor to to. To for you to take in a complete fucking stranger and to to believe in me and to be where we are today, I I appreciate that man. And we're we've come literally so fucking far, you know. We have you know we we sometimes we have three people watching, sometimes we have twelve people watching. Shit, there was one time we I, we had like I think seventeen or twenty people watching at one point, you know. Yeah. And and we do this we. We come to church every single Sunday, baby. You know, That's right, right. We this is to, this 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 is our holy place. You know, this we, is our holy we, place. we come to church every single Sunday, and it's just been a fucking pleasure to to be where where we are today. You know, ten dollars. 
we're getting ready. We're getting ready to, to go on vacation together with our families. Like, and and we we, we would have never even known each other if we hadn't been playing playing games together, you know. And obviously, co- coronavirus helped out a lot with that because we had a lot a lot of extra time on our hands. Oh, yeah. But holy shit, man! Like like we're we we would have never met. We would have never known each other if 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 it wasn't for this. And you talk about it being an honor, dude. Like it's it's been an honor and a privilege. Like and actually, you're, 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 and you're I, a good dude. And I actually have to say, um, the the person responsible for bringing me in is actually the guy in our chat, Joe Poe. He, you know, he that that's that's my brother, man. That's my fucking brother. And um, he he's actually he's the one I'm actually doing flag for removal with. Which the first the first episode is out, guys. Just you know, just. It's just the first one, okay? It's just the first one. Just fucking wait. <laughs> just wait. It'll get better. But, you know, he he brought me, he was the one that found DD214 Gaming and brought me into it. Right. So, right. I you know, if it wasn't if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have have even met you guys. So, it, you know, shit. I'm not trying to get to, you know, we got to get to the final thought, but we'll you know, we'll get into it next week, but I just I just have to say that, you know, it, it it is, you know I, I know I got the, I know I got the brother for fucking life. Absolutely. I know I got Absolutely. the brother for fucking life, and that's that's you know this has been mentally fulfilling for me. It's given me it's given me a, a sense of purpose. You know, and and I I thank you, man. I thank you honestly. Thank you. Thank you, brother. And I and no, I I just want to send a shout out to everybody in the D two fourteen gaming community. We when I when I when I joined. When I joined DD214 Gaming last year, we had less than two dozen. We had less than 24 people. Was, we were just barely above 20 people in the whole in the group. And there's over 500 now, and it's and it's still growing. And it's it's been it's been amazing watching this community grow. And I see the streams on our page all the time. People streaming their their gameplay. People putting up memes and putting up funny stuff. And you know the friendly the friendly banter between different military branches. Uh, supporters, supporters, you know, like spouses and loved ones of military members that are part of our community. We, 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 we welcome and we love you all, you know, we welcome and love you all and, and thank all of you. It's been, it's been a fucking year. It's definitely been a fucking year. Like, so yeah. yeah. And in saying that too, don't forget guys, you are never alone. If you don't want to talk to us or write to one of us, if you don't feel comfortable with that. You can hit the suicide prevention hotline at 1-800-273-TALK, 1-800-273-8255. Someone is always there to hear your story. And if you don't want to call them, you can text them. Someone is someone is there, guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, don't forget to comment, like, and share. Um, also, if you guys are, whatever you're listening to the podcast on, we... Uh, um, fucking leave a comment let us know what you think let us know what you would like to see and yeah stay tuned guys we're gonna see you next fucking week for the one year anniversary of dd214 gaming guys see you guys next time love you john i love you my brother